Hey, how's it going everyone, and welcome back. Today has been a massive info explosion of Forsaken news. There's been so much to go over. I'm currently also working on another video talking about the Vidoc that was released after the launch trailer. But in this one, I actually wanted to cover some of the exotics that have actually been leaked, or rather data mined, and it looks like this seems to be all of them, or at least the ones that Bungie haven't classified. There's also a ton of other interesting files in here that I wanted to go over, so for now, whilst I work on my other video, I hope that you guys enjoyed this one. Obviously, and I don't think I should need to say this by now, but spoilers and such, you know the deal. So, starting off with the exotic weapons here, we can now confirm that the Queen Breaker's Bow and Lord of Wolves are indeed going to be returning to Destiny, and I mean it makes sense considering we're going to be going back to the Reef. So the Queen Breaker's Bow is going to be considered a linear fusion rifle and will fit in your power weapon slot, whereas the Lord of Wolves, that is an energy weapon. Right here we do have the icon for the Queen Breaker's Bow, but not the Lord of Wolves, it just says temporary. A lot of these items in the database on here are listed, but they don't really have their actual icons yet, so it just says temp. Also listed on here is the exotic shotgun, the Chaperone. That is also going to be returning from Destiny 1. That's the one that you got from an exotic quest from Amanda Holiday after doing a bunch of Crucible stuff, and it's going to be a similar thing with Destiny 2 as well. So the Chaperone is actually going to be coming from an exotic quest again, which features a lot of Crucible steps. We know this because some of the steps are actually listed in here with these files. It doesn't tell us exactly how we're going to get this exotic quest for the chaperone, so we're not sure if it's just going to be random, or if you're going to have to meet certain requirements, or get to a certain point in the game first. But the descriptions in these quest steps are actually pretty vague as well, so I'm not really sure how deep this is going to go. For example, it just says, rack up enemy guardian kills in gambits, crucible shotgun kills, visit Amanda Holiday, defeat guardians with arc solar and void damage in the crucible, and visit Amanda Holiday again in the tower. So I'm not sure if these are all the steps, but these are just the ones listed here. As for the rest of the exotic weapons here, we pretty much already know about most of these, thanks to the trailer that was released not too long ago, a couple of weeks ago I think, which listed a bunch of the exotics coming, so it's not like these are some kind of massive secret. But there are also a couple of new ones here. So here we have the exotic auto rifle, Cerberus Plus One. Then we have the exotic bow, Wish Ender, as well as the other exotic bow, Trinity Ghoul. Then we have the exotic fusion rifle, 1000 Voices. And then we have the exotic hand cannons, Malfeasance and Ace of Spades. We already knew that Ace of Spades was returning. Then we have the two-tailed fox. This is an exotic rocket launcher. Then we have the Black Talon, an exotic sword, and there's actually a new one here which hasn't actually been shown before. This is the Wave Splitter, it's a trace rifle, and it's a void weapon. It goes in your energy weapon slot, so now with this expansion we'll have one trace rifle for each element. So we already have the Cold Heart, which does arc damage, then we have the Prometheus Lens, which does solar damage, and now this Wave Splitter will do void damage. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what this weapon is like. There's also a ton of legendary weapons and armor listed in this database. Of course, I'm not going to go over every single one of them because we'll be here for quite a while, but if you want to go through these weapons for yourself, there'll be a link in the description. But one weapon I do want to note is a sidearm, the Vestine Dynasty. That is also going to be making a return as an energy weapon in this expansion. Those of you that played Destiny will remember that the Vestine Dynasty was the first ever sidearm to be introduced with the House of Wolves expansion. So I think some people are pretty excited for this weapon to return as well. Moving on to the exotic armor now, unfortunately we don't have any of the icons for this gear, so we don't know what they look like. Some of these are new, some of these we've already seen from the trailer, so let's just go through these, starting with the chromatic fire. This is an exotic chess piece for the warlock, and the perk on this causes elemental explosions from precision kinetic kills. Next up is the Phoenix Protocol, again this is an exotic chess piece for the Warlock. Then we have the Heart of Inmost Light, this is an exotic chess piece for the Titan. And for the Hunter you have the Gwizen, Gwizen, Gwizen Vest, I'm not sure how to pronounce that. That's an exotic chess piece for the Hunter. Then also for Hunters we have the Sixth Coyote, this has already been shown in one of the trailers. This chess piece grants double dodge. Then we have the Controverse Hold, these are exotic gauntlets for the Warlock, and we also have the Ursa Furiosa exotic gauntlets for the Titan. Then we have the Earth Keeper, these are exotic gauntlets for Hunters. Again, we also have another exotic gauntlet for Hunters here called Shards of Galanor, 
then we have the One-Eyed Mask and Exotic Helmet for Titans, we have Geomag Stabilizers, these are Leg Armor for Warlocks, and lastly here we have the Antius Wards, these are Exotic Boots for the Titan, and once again this one has been shown in the trailers. When you slide with these boots equipped, it creates a shield that can deflect projectiles. Unfortunately, we don't have any of the perks for this gear either, the most we have is just the flavour text. Moving on to the next section here, we have emblems. Now, there's actually some pretty interesting stuff in here as well. A lot of the icons for these are just placeholders, so they use already existing icons that are in-game, so just ignore them, but some of the descriptions seem pretty interesting. So there's just a couple of items I wanted to go through here in the emblem section. Firstly, this Primeval Prime emblem, the description reads, You can find this rare drop when killing the Malfeasance boss in a Gambit match. The reason I thought this was interesting is because apparently a boss has the same name as that exotic hand cannon. So I'm wondering if that hand cannon, the Malfeasance, is somehow tied to this boss, or if they just happen to have the same name. There's also a few emblems here that you get for completing Nightfall versions of the new strikes that are coming. There are going to be four new strikes, but one of these is called the Corrupted, and the emblems associated with this are called Tekken's Temple and Sedia's Curse. Now, Sedia is the name of one of the Tekkens, and the Tekkens, which we've been hearing a lot about recently, are the witches that are seen behind Mara Sov in the Tekken King Cut scene when she supposedly died in that battle with Oryx. We recently saw these Tekkens again in one of the recent trailers for Forsaken, but it seems they've been corrupted by the Taken, and so it looks like now we're actually going to be fighting these witches, these Tekkens. And the fact that these emblems with these names, Tekken's Temple and Sedia's Curse, are tied with the corrupted Nightfall Strike makes me wonder if that's where we'll fight them. It seems that one of these witches could actually be the boss of this fight, which I think would be a pretty unique boss considering a lot of the enemies we'll always fight are some kind of variation of one of the four existing races, so it'd be interesting to kind of fight an Awoken character. Further down here we have two emblems, one is called Transcendence, the other is Secret Victories. The description for Transcendent reads, End by completing all Ascendant Challenge time trials and the description for Secret Victories reads, This emblem tracks the number of Ascendant challenges you've completed in the Dreaming City. These two stood out to me because the Ascendant challenges and the Ascendant challenge time trials seem like they could be some kind of puzzle or secret that Bungie keeps talking about in the Dreaming City, so I'm interested in finding out what those could be exactly. There's also just some really cool looking emblems in here as well, and I'm wondering if these are actually going to be in-game, because some of them don't even look like something you know Bungie would add to the game, they just don't really match up with a lot of the other emblems. But for example here we have this one, First to the Forge, First to the Wild, then this one, the Sign of Celebration, which has the seventh column symbol on it, and the seventh column, that's an important symbol to Bungie, it's a symbol of the community, so I'm wondering if that could be tied to something important, because they don't really just slap that anywhere. There's also this little lights emblem which looks really cool, and just a bunch of others here. If you want to look through all these, like I said, I'll leave a link in the description, there's quite a few to go through. Moving on here, we can see some exotic ships and exotic sparrows, but we can only see just one of the exotic sparrows. It's called Harbinger's Echo, and this description reads, We each must play our part in the greater plan. I Lin. Now this one seemed pretty interesting to me because firstly the name Harbinger's Echo, Harbingers are the names of those mysterious weapons that the Tekkens and the Queen was able to summon back in the Tekken King. And Ai Lin is also the name of one of those Tekkens. She's actually the Coven Leader, I believe. So a bit of a mysterious description there on that Sparrow. I wonder why this is the only one that actually appears in the database, because the rest just have temporary icons and we don't even have names or descriptions for those. But anyway, as usual, we have a bunch of weapon ornaments here. We don't have the icons, unfortunately, so I'm just going to read out which ones these ornaments are for. So there's going to be an ornament for the Chaperone, the Malfeasance, Risk Runner, Prometheus Lens, Ace of Spades, Wish Ender, Darcy, Tractor Cannon, The Prospector, Cold Heart, Crimson, Hard Light, Trinity Ghoul, and The Colony. And then as for the armor ornaments, we have one for the Stumpies, the Celestial Nighthawk, the Intermonstable Skullfort, Eternal Warrior, Nezarak Sin, and Vesper of Radius. Now, I'm not entirely sure if these are going to be all of the exotics in this expansion. I feel like there may be a couple that are still classified by Bungie that aren't appearing in the database. 
For example, the Whisper of the Worm, that had never appeared in the database. There was hints to it with the catalyst and such, but the actual weapon itself never appeared. It was a very hidden weapon, and so I reckon there might be a couple like that with Forsaken, potentially one for the last word. As for the rest here, we have just a bunch of quest items and materials and random bits and bobs that don't really mean too much to us right now, so I'm not really going to bother reading into those. However, there are a couple of items of interest that I wanted to note. So there's actually some items relating to Ahamkara here. We have three items, there's the Corrupted Egg, its description reads, Surely no life could come from such an egg. Then we have Ahamkara Burns, the wonders I could show you, a collector mine. The succulent flesh we could together flay. And then lastly, crystallized thoughts, although I'm not really sure what this crystal is for. Its description just reads, this crystal pulses with a steady repeating pattern. Now according to this, these are just materials. I don't know if these are a part of a quest or what. Could be raid items, I'm not too sure. But I find it quite interesting that there's quite literally an item in here called Ahamkara Burns and all signs point to the raid boss being an Ahamkara. So that is about all for this video, that's just about everything I wanted to go through. Like I said, there's a ton of random stuff in here, all sorts of legendary gear, blue gear, materials to do with the Dreaming City and all sorts of other stuff if you want to go look through it for yourself. I'm currently working on another bigger video talking about the Vidoc and just what's to come in the future for Destiny after Forsaken with the annual pass, so do stay tuned for that, it's going to be a bit of a longer one. As always, I do hope that you enjoyed the video, thank you all very much for watching, and I'll talk to you next time.